Good afternoon, Ms. Tugar, and, and welcome to NATO. I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about what brings you here today. Well, I wanted to come here to, uh, to first of all, thank NATO for um, intervening in uh, protecting the civilians of my country, Libya, and also to tell to NATO that not to abandon Libya after the operation is over. So I would like to see more NATO involvement in, in, in seeing the progress of, of, the, of the future of Libya. We just recently co commemorated the one-year anniversary of the Arab Spring. In, what, in your opinion, what role do you think women played in bringing forth change to the region? I think women played a significant role in, uh, in making uh, the revolution succeed. Um, they were the soft part of the revolution. Uh, moral, psychological, um, educational, um, civil society role. I mean, I'll give you a few examples in Libya. Uh, they, were, they were smuggling guns. So women were used to smuggle guns because they were underestimated. So, so that, uh, I, think, I think that um, uh, it's, uh, they have played a significant, significant role. And do you also think that social media has helped to empower women in the region and give women a larger voice? Absolutely. It was a platform for very young women, very active, um, very, very ambitious, and they wanted to play a role. They wanted to be part of the revolution, and they have. Um, you know, as young as 13, 14, young women were active and writing and um, uh, being, um, how do you say, putting their opinion forward. Um, I think, I think uh, social media has played a significant role, too. And what do you think that NATO could be doing in order to give women a larger role in peace building and security issues? I think NATO should leverage their power to influence policy with our governments, especially our interim governments, um, and to, to, you know, NATO intervene to protect civilians for, 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 for the, for the well-being of human, humans, and NATO cannot see human rights violations being committed against women. And to follow up, do you think that UN Security Council Resolution 1325 has been effective? And if not, do you think, what do you think the international community could do to make it more effective? I think, first of all, the, the UN Resolution 1325 hasn't been, um, how do you say, um, action planned in any of the Arab countries, as far as I'm, I, I know. Um, I think today, it's something that we should talk about. We should force them to, to look at it and to, 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 to do something about it. Um, and that's a fantastic opportunity for me to be here, to get to know more about it and to convey the message when I go back home. And on that, if you could speak directly to women living in the Middle East and in the Arab world, what message would you like to give them? Um, you have been part of this from the beginning. Um, you know, some men would try to hijack this and I think we should not allow them. It's too late now. I think we should just go forward and it's a challenge, but we need to, we, we, we need to continue the fight. I understand you yourself were very involved in the events in Libya and in the Arab Spring. Could you tell us a little bit more about your, about your role and what kind of change uh, you helped bring to the region? My role was really conveying the atrocities that were happening in Libya. I was abroad at the time. I had family inside the country and with codes I was getting some messages and I was just transmitting these messages on the internet. Um, I've also helped with um, some victims um, that were the victim, victims of, of the Gaddafi regime that, that needed help and needed to, to leave. So I was making the link and making the, the, the networking for these people to get out of the country safely.